What's up folks, it's your boy DT 2.0 and today we have the consumer review of the Alienware X14. Now, when this laptop was first announced, I wasn't excited about it as I thought I would be, mainly because of the specs or the build configurations. I assumed that they were going to let us get it as powerful as the Razer Blade 14 and compete with that, but instead, they went the opposite direction and put it in the same ring as one of my favorite 14-inch laptops, the Asus G14. Can Alienware's 14-inch attempt go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the G14? We about to find out. Let's get it. Now, before we jump all over what I feel about this laptop, let's get into these specs. This baby sports the Intel Core i7 12700H, 16 gigabytes of RAM at 4800 megahertz, a 512 gigabyte SSD, the NVIDIA RTX 3050 Ti with four gigabytes of VRAM, a 14 inch 1080p display at 144 hertz, and of course it has their Comfort View Plus NVIDIA G-Sync with a three millisecond response time. It's also super bright at what I feel has to be 400 to 500 nits. I paid $1,600 for this with taxes, so it's not the cheapest, but it was still cheaper than a G14 by about 50 bucks. But the G14 did have the AMD Radeon chip and a one terabyte SSD. So they have that going forward. Doing a quick roundabout on the left side, ain't nothing but a vent. On the right side, guess what? It's exactly the same. Nothing but a vent. But the rear is where all the goodness is. We have a power slash display port, that's USB-C, the headphone microphone combo jack, an HDMI out, a single USB-A port, a micro SD card slot, and two Thunderbolt ports. They just decided to put the Thunderbolt symbol in the middle to, get, I guess, save ink. I'm messing with y'all. It was smart of them, but I was a little bit confused at first because I was like, which one of these is the motherfucking Thunderbolt port? But they just put it in the middle. Now, holding this thing is just satisfying, to be honest. It's thin, but feels extremely solid, especially in comparison to its chief rival, in my opinion, the G14. I thought the G14 was thin, but this is really the razor blade. No pun intended. I'm pleasantly surprised with the look and feel, but I'll go into the details of that a little bit later. Now y'all know the routine and if you haven't been here before, this is what it is. This is a consumer review and I'm just giving you the perspective or opinion from the consumer, me, who may or may not be experienced dealing with computers or laptops. When all you want to know is, hey, when I get this mug home, is it going to work like it's supposed to? Is it going to run the programs that I run? Is it going to play the games that I want to play? With that, I give you my likes, my dislikes, and my recommendation and I always as, well, yeah, not always, but most of the time, play some games at the very end. So you just have to hold on for that. Is this thing a keeper or is it going back? Let's go. Like number one, and I said it before, the look, feel, and build quality. This thing is like a teenage X15 or X17, which I have loved since I first purchased one a couple of years ago. But this is even thinner. To handle this thing is easy because it's light and it feels like a tank. Very little flexing both on top and also on the display. The hinge feels solid and well built with almost no wiggle. The thing I like the most about this build is the location of the ports. See this Asus? You watching? I don't mind the extra junk in the trunk in the back to house those ports because they're hidden and it makes it look neat while sitting on my desk. The same design cue that Lenovo and MSI gaming laptops have, they implemented it here. So even though they didn't take any risk having the opportunity to introduce a completely new design, they just made a mini X15 and X17 and though I'm disappointed, I understand. It's extremely lappable, like a child sitting in Santa's lap for a pic. Mm hmm. I know y'all thought I was going to say like a 5-2 stripper, but I didn't. I think I just did. Moving on, like number two, the display. It's bright, and even though it's only 1080p, it's still crispy AF on the display this size. The colors just pop, and games look great. But the one thing I like the most about this display is it is the very first that I've had in here that has, listen to me now, zero backlight bleed and very little IPS glow. 
I know this varies from unit to unit, and it seems I got lucky, but I'm very satisfied with it because it makes those blacks look that much deeper and games look that much better. So, Dell, whatever process you use to make this display, do it on your other laptops because it's working. Like number three, and that's the port selection. This is the perfect combination of ports for a laptop this size, and it seems they're pushing us away from those USB-A ports because they also did it with their new gaming headsets that I have by having a USB-C dongle. Now, this only has one USB-A port, but we knew that was going to happen eventually, right? Even though I wanted more USB-A ports, I need to face the facts that it's going away like an 8-track, laser disc, VCR tapes, cassette tapes, CDs. DVDs, HD DVDs, Blu-rays. Y'all get what I'm saying? We are all tech old AF. But really, the only thing I feel that was crammed in there was the micro SD card slot. But I understand that they had to put something there. I would have liked a full size SD card slot, but I guess I'll deal with adapters if I need to. So unlike the X15, which port selection sucked in my opinion, I'm satisfied with what they provided us in the X14. Like number four, and that's the keyboard. I've always been a fan of Alienware's keyboards. I get it. Everybody has their taste for what they like, and I like these. They're easy to type on with the right amount of resistance. Key travel, though not as deep as the G14, they're not as shallow as the MacBook Pro. This strikes a good balance between the two, and I'm feeling it, literally. I typed this review on it, and it felt comfortable the entire time. I also like the fact that even though this is a smaller laptop, they kept the shortcut keys for volume up, down, mute, and mic mute in the same position. Lighting, on the other hand, is just okay. I don't hate it, but I also don't love it, as it's only because I know what Alienware is capable of when it comes to keyboard lighting. They're good at it. I thought they cheaped out here, especially for a laptop of this price. Because it's only one zone, there's light leakage all over the place, and it just seems dim overall to me in comparison to their past per-key lighter keyboard. They don't even give you the option to select the per-key while building this, so everybody's stuck with this keyboard. The one thing that saves it, though, is it's black, so unlike the G14 where the deck is white, there's enough contrast here to make it seem brighter than what it is. I see what you did there, Dale. The trackpad is bleh. It's small and okay. Damn, did my girl tell me that the other night while we was arguing? I need a damn Drake now. Now, before I get into the unfortunates or dislikes, let's talk about battery life and fan noise. Fan noise is on par with the G14 if we're comparing the two, just with the higher pitch. It didn't bother me, and they were also able to be drowned out by the speakers, which I'll talk about here pretty soon. But they can be controlled with Alienware's or in Alienware's command center if you place the settings in quiet mode. But just be mindful that it'll pull some of that power you have for gaming away when you do that. But at least it'll be quiet. Battery life is good, but not as good as the G14. Four, maybe five hours, and I always test these with screen max or screens on max brightness. So if you change the settings to low power, you may be able to squeeze maybe another hour or so out of it. Maybe. But would I feel comfortable taking this alone to be reliable all day? Nah, I wouldn't. But the good thing is, it's light as hell, and carrying that power brick wouldn't add much weight to your knapsack anyway, so it's no problem for me. Now on to the unfortunates or my dislikes. And my dislike number one and chief dislike is the right shift key. Though I love the keyboard overall, it took a minute to get used to this little ass shift key. I can see that they wanted to make the arrow keys larger and more symmetrical, easier to get to, but it was at the cost of the right shift key. Not a good decision if you ask me. Until I got used to it, I kept hitting the up arrow key without even noticing it and look up at, the, at my screen and it looks like I've been typing Russian and shit. So be mindful that if you type a lot on here or planning to type a lot on here, type a lot on here, it'll take some getting used to. Don't be like me. Dislike number two are the configuration options. 3060 is the best y'all can do? One zone keyboard, really? No track lighting in the back like the X15 and X17 even as an option? I would have paid for it. But I think that since this is a new product, they really didn't want to take any major risks, just in case it fell flat. And I get it, but I don't have to like it. So maybe we'll see some better options out there when and if the X14 R2 or whatever they're going to call it ever comes out. Dislike number three are the speakers. Yes, they're loud enough to drown out the fans, but that's about it. Just get some headphones. 
Preferably the ones that Alienware sells that are noise canceling, which I did a review on as they are great. And they ain't paying me to say that shit. Now, I do like the placement of the speakers so you can hear some stereo separation. But man, they like any type of color. To put it plainly, they flat and just disappointing like a stripper with no ass. Keep all your dollars. Yeah, I said it. Well, that's it for my dislikes. And there weren't that many, to be honest, because this is a good laptop overall. But what about what y'all came for? The performance. Now, for the performance, I'm going to put this thing in a ring with its main competitor, the Asus G14. And I got an extra. It's brother in arms, the Dell G15, which I hated because it had a 3050 Ti just like this laptop. I really didn't want to get this laptop with that 3050 but I wanted to see if Dell was hindering the G15 for lack of a better term because it did have Alienware parts in it. But what I found was quite surprising. Running 3D Mark's Time Spy Extreme, we see that the X14 fell behind both the G15 and G14, which was a cause for concern. But this is a synthetic test and this only provided me with a baseline. So while I was disappointed, I was still optimistic about it. Now, running 3D Mark's Port Royal ray tracing tests, disappointingly, the X14 could not even run the test. It just kept freezing until it got tired, though 3D Mark did warn me that the car would struggle before the test. But that 3050Ti wanted none of that Port Royal test smoke, but I still held out hope. Now, running the Time Spy Extreme stress test, which basically runs the Time Spy Extreme test over and over, I got some decent results. It actually passed with almost a 99% uh, score. And also, surprisingly, and I know that some of y'all going to ask me in the comments about temps, it stayed rather cool. I mean, like really, really cool. Like no more than 70 degrees for the CPU and 60, 65, maybe almost 70 degrees for the GPU. So that's pretty damn good, to be honest with you. Now, we watch a lot of reviews online that contain synthetic testing results. And a lot of us, and I'm saying us because I'm included, base our purchasing decisions off of those tests sometimes. The reason I wanted my channel to be different was to take 99% of the synthetic testing out of the equation and just do things that I do and play the games that I play with my laptop. That way, my decision is based on real world results and not synthetic ones. Hopefully it helps you. This is, a, is an example of when synthetic testing sometimes pulls a fast one on you. Because running Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which is an old game but still pushes even my Aurora R13 with a full RTX 3080 to its limits, we see that though the X14 is not good at practice, synthetic testing, once you put them in the game, real world, it just performs. Kind of reminds me of Allen Iverson. We just talking about practice, not a game. Not a game, practice. I ran the test at ultra settings without any ray tracing and with NVIDIA DLSS in quality mode, which for these laptops is expected. Just look at the performance of the X14 in comparison to the G14. Nearly the same, and the G14 had an RTX 3060. It absolutely murdered the Dell G15, which has the exact same card, but the G15 also had only 8 gigabytes of slow ass RAM. So what I'm saying here is don't put all your eggs in that synthetic test basket when you're watching these reviews out here. And I know I love them, too. I get it. Look for those. Also look for those that just play the games that you play and make your determination off of that. I had no issues playing Shadow of the Tomb Raider. No issues maintaining 80 to 100 frames per second playing Gears 5. These are graphically intensive games. So if you're going to play games, something or something less graphically intensive, expect better than decent results. I can't play everybody's game on the channel. So I try to play the ones that stress the cards the most. But if you could think of any more taxing games, excluding Red Dead 2, hit me in the comments. Now on to my recommendation. So do I recommend the Alienware X14? And I'd have to say yes, if you're okay with the price. I'm always talking about price, right? I guess I'm just cheap as fuck. But really, I only mention price because I always look at other laptops that fall in the landscape in this price range. The only difference here is you have to favor Alienware. It does have that iconic Alienware design. It's built great. It's solid. It's thin. 
light and performs for what it is. It's an extremely portable gaming rig that's light in the ass, but punches kind of heavy like Floyd Mayweather. But if I was thinking about purchasing this and didn't want to pay full price, just wait a few months and you'll find it in Dell's outlet site for much less. Especially if you ask for an additional discount, which ranges from about 2 to 10%, depending on one, your negotiation skills, and two, who you talk to. But at the end of the day, even though I didn't expect much out of this baseline build, I was pleasantly surprised at what it was able to do. And I'd say it's a keeper. This your boy DT 2.0. Thanks for watching. Y'all stay safe, stay healthy, and the hell out of trouble. Peace.